Pardon? Looks like you've been volunteering. Well. <coughs> we were actually, we went a great distance. I think we went to page seven. Did we not? Well, I was at 29 or 30, wasn't I? <laughs> yeah, that's where I was. Mike, uh, <laughs> Mike, uh, <laughs> Mike, uh, <laughs> Page 27 to 31, is that where we were? Right. Yeah. I got stuck again. Where? In the short. In the short? Page on the bottom of yeah. <laughs> page 28. All right. Yeah, let me put this right back. In shorts. In shorts. Usually where I get stuck. In the shorts? In shorts. Right down there. Precede and B. So just for a moment, let me just raise a question. Huh? Sorry. I wonder, what, wonder whether you'd go along with this reason. <laughs> See how we can do it. Okay. I think so. <laughs> I just changed in the middle of the string. Therefore, it's going to be far much more fun. Would you agree with the following proposition? There are these kinds of things. Now, would you also agree that we can also talk about these things <coughs> okay. on the aspect of time. That is, there has been a long, and this line is going to indicate that, a long line of development that has brought us to where we are. Would you go further and say our development as man is still continuing? Okay, now, <coughs> next proposition. We do not agree, we do not agree that the idea of man must include the whole. Oh, it's going to be greater. Pardon? It has to be greater. Yeah, but it includes. Oh, yeah. It includes. Yeah. Huh? yeah. By the way, wouldn't you agree that this ideal, or we can call it archetype, <coughs> contains, as it were, this whole development from beginning to end? Implicit within the archetype are all the stages in the unfolding of man. That true? Mm -hmm. Let's go along this reason? Go along this reason? Aye. Yes. Right? Okay. Therefore, we will indicate that by uh, that this is nothing else other than the acting out of what lies potentially in the architect. Would you go further and say that somewhere somewhere in the development of man there's a peculiar process that takes place where he decides that he wants to know himself. And hopefully that's part of the general progress of man. 
and then in the archetype, which must be there purely. So in the development of man, there's the idea of progress? Yes. <coughs> Not here. Here, there's no progress. Yeah, in, the, in that yeah. <coughs> development. Now, this capacity, this capacity to turn about and know oneself, right? that's a reversion. That's a reversion. <coughs> then that that reversion, by the way, that's who see it. That's who see it. Now, when man knows himself, we do not agree what he what he then discovers is the nature of mind. Using the small letter. <clears throat> he doesn't learn about his foot. So in that sense, uh, the, he, he participates at this moment, he participates in this moment, in an activity of self-reflection that turns about as a reversion that gives him an insight into the nature of mind. Pardon? What did you find out? What did he find out? Oh, a variety of things. The nature of reality is real. What were we talking about before? What did he find out about his, what came out about his mind? That was, that it isn't his. It's <laughs> more a small mind. <laughs> he uh, recognized that it's neither small nor his. <laughs> <clears throat> so, the point being that, that at this moment then, uh, what he gains an insight into and what he utilizes for this is the universal aspect of this idea right? the archetype that we're calling the universal and it allows him to gain an insight in what is essentially above man the archetype man that is it gives him an insight now into the realm of mind or intelligence. Being. Or let me now represent it in terms of a, this model. Where a has a reflective quality right, that that then this is universal light, which is then right, allows a participation this because it is part of a universal man fulfilling an archetypal function allows therefore this kind of a passage, doesn't it? That's a monad. That's a monad. That's right. That's right. It's a triad. <laughs> it's a triad. It's a monad. That's right. That's what a monad is. It goes through three phases. Three now, uh, again, all right? This, this is the model. This is the model that goes through a great deal of process. Watch. What were we doing before? Now, these are spatial only because of the figures. The thing that they represent is not spatial. But the top level we're calling being intelligence. 
Not part of the top level is calling the one. The next level I'm calling the Hi. I don't want to do that one. That, that'll go later. Let me do this one first. Okay, I'm using being, intelligence, vitality, or life. Would you agree that in, if we have a set of particulars, it presupposes their participation in a class? By definition, agree? We have a set of particulars that have a common trait, yeah. and that, then they, they therefore formally belong into a class. Therefore, would you not agree, right, we can now talk about the priority of these three. Yeah. We can talk about which one is highest, which one is middle and which one is lowest? Uh -huh. Countless. Yeah. Right? And we can establish that in, in, by a certain kind of type of reasoning, uh, which we can easily do. Right? That is to say that uh, being is more inclusive and includes more things in the category of intelligence since there can be things which do not necessarily have intelligence though they have being. And there equally can be things that belong in a class of intelligence. And uh, vitality is more extensive than that which has, has intelligence. Right? Because by the hierarchy. Right? All right. Now, all I want to do now is go to the next step. Therefore, <coughs> there is a higher or true being. Above those. Sense being belongs in these three categories that we've just described. There's a whole that's above the class. Huh? That's a whole above the class. <coughs> so, now, all that, now watch this. This is kind of magic. If there is a pure one, Then, all right, the class of which the one is the, uh, the class of which the one is the parent presupposes there are going to be a group of things in it that are going to be akin to it and resemble it most closely as these do that. And since the idea of the one, would you agree, is also the idea of the good, this class of things will have to be things that are unity, because that is most like the one, and it must be unity and goodness, because that is most like the pure class. Agree? Now, in other words, then we can say beneath the one is unity, goodness, and most akin and like it. Now, can this be a class, can this be a class in which true being and things like that are itself members? So therefore, we're dealing with a structure that's somewhat like this. So.
where each step as we proceed downward has the same relationship to its parent on every model copy on every level. And that is, in each case, the members are going to be, are going to resemble most closely the parent and akin to it. Each is the archetype for the other. Right, right, right. In a descending scale. Is each the cause of the other? And can be said to be the cause of the other. Right. So, working this out <coughs> and the relationships that exist between these, where this is a interrelationship between classes, is a way of understanding the dynamics between those classes. So depending upon what point you want to make, <coughs> you can use this dynamic in any class. All right, just as theoretical. Right? Does that dynamic work between the classes? Or just well, wherever you put those. You can't do something above it and below it. No, that's right, so long as there's something above and below. Like, uh, this then, this class, all right, must itself have a, must have members, must have me members in such a way that uh, they, they would then be, as an example, all right, we can say this is the problem of providence because providence is the, the capacity of extending goodness to all things. That's providence. Mm -hmm. In this hierarchy, it precedes and comes before intelligence since intelligence is down here. Therefore, in here, see, providence is really the, the word before or pre mm -hmm. noose. All right, or pre-intellect, mm -hmm. and that's exactly what it is. So therefore, if these if these things we put in this class have that quality of having participated in the quality of providence, then here it would be a manifold. Each one of these could be a manifold. Right. Because the unity into the next class can be a whole, all right? A different kind of interesting whole because these then would be true being, true intelligence, and true vitality, which here would be the way in which they exhibit on the next level, which is what the scientists would call the second hypothesis. Okay, just that, just, uh, just to get back to where we were. Um, the what do you think? How does he get from the first hypothesis? Sly of hand. How does he get from the first to the second? Well, you ask me a question. I'm seeking confirmation for his own opinion. It sounds like. Well, he said sly of hand, and he said that's what I thought. Oh, no, no, like what you were saying today, what he said one is that right? Or you said it's kind of fun. No, those are your words. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, no, I oh. just said that it, uh, it wasn't it wasn't adequate from my understanding. So, um, and that's why I suggested there was 25 other classes in the meetings you could find the same discussion. You wanted to collect and develop it further. So, okay. yeah, I just thought you had you were looking for confirmation here. I don't have to follow. Well, yeah, I didn't think it was satisfactory either. That's why I told it to slide it in. Fair? Okay. Now we're still. Want to, want to start again? <coughs> Where do you want to start there at the bottom? In short. Yeah. Yeah. In short. In <coughs> short. Being which exists according to. 
or is characterized by the one, proceeds indeed from the unity prior to being. Prior to being. <coughs> Where did you place it here? Oh, it's 28 at the bottom. You know, where did you place it on your model? Well, this represents being intelligent. Is that what he's saying is characterized by the one? No. <coughs> but your being, which subsists according to and is characterized by the one, proceeds indeed from the unity prior to being. But the unity prior to being wouldn't the be unity prior to characterized, would it? Pardon? Wouldn't the wouldn't the, the unity prior to beings be the most characteristic of the one? Of the pure one? No. Would um Unity is a property of that has is whatever it is that is the cohesive power is unity. One is beyond that. Right. And then, but would, aren't we saying that that third level, that the intelligence being is characterized by the one? I guess I'm still having trouble with, um, if we're using this idea of the, of the brackets, and we're going in the one level to the next level, if we have a pure one at one level, unity, goodness at the next level, true being at the next level, and then, in, and then, in, uh, yeah, but I think intelligence, vitality, and um, yeah. would you agree? At this point, I think the question, if I can rephrase it, is: is characterized by the one equivalent to is being the one? No, I, I don't no. Okay, good. All right, then. Uh -huh. Characterized seems to me is like the the, the the relationship between essence and function, where the function is characterized by the essence, or that that which is characterized comes before. Uh, well, that that may, can you go into the section on it, Ren? Okay. In short, being which subsists according to or is characterized by the one. That's this ground. That's that one. Yeah. Proceeds indeed from the unity right. prior to being. And that's prior to being. Now if we go back to any of our any of the other levels, and we say small a over here to the left, where we have the small mind the <coughs> Yeah. Now are we going to say that uh, A1, A2 through A and is characterized at the level above A. Yeah, let me take this out for a moment. That's a special, interesting thing that he does. And let me introduce it later. Okay. All right. Go on. Then no more. Right. Yeah. yeah because right. this is a special property that okay. All right. It's a function of the uh, irradiation. Is that overflowing? Yeah, it irradiates. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. How could the one do that? Yeah. All right. Well. Well. <laughs> Good. <laughs> <laughs> Proceeds indeed from the unity prior to being. It generates the whole divine genus. The intelligible, intellectual, and super mundane and that which proceeds as far as to the mundane order. Hey, do we are? We're on 29 at the top. Oh. Good. <coughs> See, strictly speaking, this, this unity has unities. And then we just have to make the connection between them, which we could well be able to do. Um, you 
see, he's got a very interesting problem. Well, let, me, let me see whether I can create the problem. All right. Here he has three in one. Yeah. Right. Various combinations, but three in one. That presupposed, does it not, unity. Mm -hmm. For those three could not together as one. Mm -hmm. Yet there's a difference between unity and one. Right. Ah, therefore, he's got a class here between the two. Ah, the archetypal unity. Yeah. Because each of those are composed of the unity. Oh. But their yeah. unity... Yeah. And, and three. Yes, and his basic principle, remember, <laughs> is this one over here. That in any class, the members are going to resemble most closely and are akin to the parent. Therefore, there's a gap between this and this, doesn't yeah. it? The he unity. finds the mean within this. Uh, the unity, unity gap. Being good. The unity gap. That's the unity gap. So therefore, by seeking a mean between these two, it creates this. That's the bridging concept. Otherwise, he couldn't have the one here being an intelligence here, because that would mean in that generation, the members in this class don't resemble it and are not akin to it yeah. as they should. Therefore, he puts them down here. That makes this class unity. Is that what he means by characterized by the one? Well, oh, characterized by the one. Uh, That's the idea of the good, then. The characterized yeah, by the one. Yeah, characterized by the one. Which one would that be? The unity or the third section? I don't, uh, I don't understand the question. Uh, well, there's a lot of terms being used. Idea of the good characterized by the one, unity of good. Yeah, okay. The choice you're giving me, I can't do. Uh, if you're asking me how this can be understood, yeah. I might be able to help you without going into the alternatives you get. Unless you find a preference for one of those terms, then I'll have to talk. Well, I guess I'm trying to figure out what he's saying here and how that fits the model up there. He's using different terms. And does his language apply to that model that's being described here? Yeah. Remember the point I was just asking, Bill. You make a difference between something being characterized by the one and being the one. Well, characterized by the one would not be it would not be the one. It would have whatever character there is. That would be the class. The nest. Pardon? Okay. That would be the nest. N-E-S-S. Right. Okay. And the nest of one is unity. Okay. Right. One nest. Nest is right. The characterizing something, and that's equal to unity, is it not? Okay. Right. okay. Therefore, it jumps up here. Preceptor likewise asserts that each of the conclusions is indicated of a divine peculiarity. Now, for him now, this class, this class, 
divine. When Plotinus talks about the divine, he's talking about this class. Occasionally, he'll talk about this class being divine, but more frequently, that's what he's talking about, divine as this class. You mean Proclus is talking about Front, yeah, Trinity Proclus. goodness. Yeah. So and is this is what and Plotinus is, is labeling intelligence being this, this other class. Mm -hmm. And he's saying that's divine. And he's not making the distinction between unity goodness and intelligence yeah. being. That's also that class of unity next to God's and the Hena's. Hena is another word for unity. Form of it. Okay, church. And though all the conclusions harmonize to all the progressions of the one being or of being characterized by the one now are those two different things no but no, just, two, just two descriptions of the of enunciation the same, of the second hypothesis no, the same thing yeah of this level here of the three triangles. Right. That's right. Okay. That's the character. <clears throat> Yet I am of the opinion it is by no means wonderful that some conclusions should more accord with some hypotheses than with others. Well, what hypothesis there is it? Is it some hypothesis? Well, is that in the in the, um, uh, He doesn't mean Parmenides, does he? No. <coughs> That could be hypotheses of Plotinus, or it could be a hypothesis, hypothesis of. Uh, but he doesn't go outside of the fourteen conclusions of the second hypothesis in this discussion. He stays within that. So if he meant that if some of the conclusions went to other hypotheses, more likely than to none, that he would show that. But he doesn't. He takes it to the level of time, which he argues is the last element, the last conclusion, the second hypothesis. And he stops right there. And that's the last conclusion, the fourth conclusion. So, so I don't see that he goes outside of the second bill. Okay. I wonder if that's hypostasis. No, that wouldn't even fit. It's being a peculiar way of thinking about it. Isn't he saying that it's not it's not unusual yeah. or it's not the so it, it, it depends upon how the next sentence functions. Okay. It's really down. Right. For such things. Continuing a line right, of reason. Right, he is, right. right. He's he is, continuing okay. a line of reason. That's right. For mm -hmm. such things as express the peculiarity of certain orders do not necessarily belong to all the gods. So there's a difference, even though... You know, Higher and lesser gods. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's differences, even though they're same. Though. That's right. Yeah. And that's where there's difference then the same hypotheses may not apply all the way through. Let's see. 
do not necessarily belong to the gods, but such as belong to all are doubtless by a much greater reason present with each. So we would certainly expect hypothesis concerning that which each has to be the same. If therefore we ascribe... Wait, wait. Uh, how do you understand from Bada? As, as what is same in the gods, but such as belong to all. The principle of this is, and you can see it in any class, any class of anything, that, that quality which is in all of the members yeah, right. is most likely oh, to be in the archetype. That's right. <clears throat> if in some, not. If in all, Therefore, these can be got regarded as gods. Whatever quality there is in all must belong to its parent, the archetype. God. So if they are all good, then certainly. That quality of goodness must preeminently exist in the parent. Mm -hmm. Or being one. In the class rather than a member of the class. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are they putting corollary like designed for three years? Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. That's why it's one taller than the other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That allows that allows differences in the class as well as those those qualities that are contained in the class itself. So that, members. That's, that allows difference to propagate. That's right. With still, there has to be some distinctive character which is found in the law that would be born in that class. Mm -hmm. Would that be the essence? Would that be the essence? That quote, common. Yeah, that could be common. <coughs> uh, yes, no. Therefore, what we ascribe to Plato and in, and in fictitious division of the divine orders, and do not clearly evince that in other dialogues, he celebrates the progression of the gods from on high to the extremity of things, sometimes in fables respecting the soul, and at other times in other theological modes. We shall absurdly attribute to him such a division of being, and together with this, of the progression of the one. Which we wouldn't want to do. Right. But if we can evince from other dialogue that he, as will be manifest in the course of this work, has celebrated all the kingdoms of the gods, in a certain respect, is it not impossible that in the most mystic of all his works he should deliver, through the first hypothesis, the exempt transcendency of the one with respect to all the general of beings, to being itself, to a psychical essence, to form and to matter, but that he should make no mention of the divine progression and their orderly separation? Third, right, yeah. Right. Therefore, what do we have to make room for? Divine progression. That's right. And we have to find it in the dialogue. And that's the new class. Mm -hmm. For if it is proper to con contemplate last things only, Why do we touch on the first principle before other things? I had a problem with this because I couldn't decide whether last was first or first was last. Mm -hmm. 
So the first principle of things would be the last. The last would be that which is closest to us. Is that what would be last? No, first I guess closest here. I'm just speculating. <laughs> well, if you put both alternatives there, notice what happens when you read it. Okay. For it is proper to contemplate first things only. Well, that doesn't make sense. Right. Because even though that may be okay, why? Well, that's not going to help. No. <laughs> you have to start at the end of the progression and work up. Then why in the world would we do that sort of thing? Uh, well, if it's proper to contemplate last things only, why do we touch on the first principle before other things? Or if we think fit to unfold the multitude of the proper hypotheses, why do we pass from the genus of the gods and the division which it contains? Yeah, well, why? Skipping. Skipping this. So he's saying, why does Why here? Why here? Why here? Why here? Of course, that isn't, that isn't why that. What why the lesson is different? Yeah. What are you saying that? Mm -hmm. Well, it doesn't. Yeah, this is for time and the other end. Yeah, this is for time. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or do we think it fit to unfold the multitude of the proper hypothesis? Why do we pass by the genus of the gods and the divisions which it contains? Or if we unfold the nature subsisting between the first and last of things, why do we leave unknown the whole orders of those divine beings which subsist between the one and the natures that are in any respect deified? For all these particular events, that the whole discourse is defective with respect to the science of things in one. So it hadn't been, the dialectic has not been properly used on the divine being by the time. Right. That middle ground, you say, <laughs> let's not skip it. We jump too quickly to the general point. But still, Socrates in the Philebra calls upon those that love the contemplation of being to use the di dividing method and always to explore the monads of total orders and the duads, triads, or any other numbers proceeding from these. If this then is rightly determined, it is doubtless necessary that the Parmenides, which employs the whole dialectic method and discourses about being which is characterized by the one, should neither speculate multitude about the one, nor remain in the one monad of being, nor in short, introduce to the one which is above all being, the whole multitude of first beings immediately, but should unfold, as in the first order, such beings as have an occult system and are allied to the one. But as in the middle right, those genera of the gods which exist according to progression and which are more divided than the extremely united, but are allotted a union more perfect than such as have proceeded to the utmost. Now, boy, that was something right there. <laughs> you know, I'm reading along here, and here's a middle group that's got something that's more perfect than the group that came before it. No, it comes after it. Yeah. Or proceeded to the utmost? Yeah. In a procession, proceeding to the utmost is the furthest down from the top. As have proceeded. Oh, okay. I was going the wrong way then. Mm -hmm. Coming down from the top. Well, see the utmost, I go the other way. Yeah, no, utmost <laughs> the in this sense is as far down as you can I go. I see, okay. <coughs> <coughs> and should unfold as in the last rank. Yeah, right. Should have written on. Such as 
subsist according to the last division of powers and together with these, such as have a deified essence. Did everybody get that sentence? That's a real sentence. Mm-hmm. <coughs> well, we're going to find that in the Parmenides. Mm-hmm. That's right. That he does a division of the of the, the division of the divine of the divine order. We're going to see that. Yeah, the 14 conclusions in the uh, second hypothesis divide up into three classes, one of which concerns uniform and occult subsistence. The second is a middle, and the third is this multitude. And he discusses that later on. Okay, good. So that's about the same one, two, three. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the one with the greatest vitality, is that the more manifold and therefore the lowest order? The more manifold is. Okay. If therefore the first of the hypothesis is about the one, which is above all multitude, it is doubtless necessary that the hypothesis which follows this should not unfold the being itself in an indefinite and indistinct manner. But should deliver all the orders of being. Being. Mm -hmm. (coughs) For the dividing method does not admit that we should introduce the whole of multitude at once to the one, as Socrates teaches us in the Philebus. So that's why we put this unity goodness in there. Yeah, he said, check the Philebus. Right? Mm-hmm. Go to the second hypothesis, and you will come out with both of us. Apply the method of the Philebus. Mm-hmm to the second hypothesis and you come out with, which is at 17b and 18d in the final list. Someone has 17b one bottle. Huh? Mm-hmm. Well, you, it actually goes from 16c to 19b. Uh, were good numbers I found in there. If that's the case, then we can then there's four levels. Well there's there's that which combines that divine order. Would that be another arc a unity about that? Yeah, you, know, you could you could do that, uh, except for one thing. Uh, uh, there's a way you can even read Proclus to do that because there's a place where he says that divine order of gods belongs in a class God, and then he says, but God is no other than the One and the Good. Then I could show you other places where he says uh, that class is a pure unity. So he, but there's there's two ways of reading it, and they're close to both. So that the one itself could be a, above the pure one. 
that what you're saying here? That there's a possibility of having the one itself above the pure one, if we want to call the pure one unity. I, um, just just to that again so I can follow. In other words, what, what you're saying is Proclus at sometimes places in at this level above unity goodness, which is manifold, a an existent pure one. So well, yes, this is the pure one. Yeah. All right. Is that existent? Uh, yeah, I don't want to use the word existent at that point. Right. Yeah. What I just mentioned is that Gina is correct. One, two, three, four. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, right. What I'm talking yeah. about is two. Yes. Okay. This is the class of divine orders. It's also called gods. They have qualities that make them members of that class. The parent or the class is God. There are places where he talks about God is no different than the pure one. There are all, there's also places where he takes this class and says the member, the class of the class of the gods, is the divine unity. Wow. No, you're not getting confused. <laughs> no, you're trying to understand what I wrote here. You're not getting confused there, all right? No, but I do remember places where it was, that was occurring. I was figuring out what he, what he was saying, unity. And it looked like it was talking about the pure one, and then it looked like there was something in between them. Well, that you can, but that isn't the point you're making here. No. <coughs> right. Here you're saying there's four, yeah. and sometimes it seems, looks like it's three. Mm -hmm. In that, that respect, you're talking about this, not that. Right. Mm -hmm. Besides, we may evince the truth of what we assert from the very method of the demonstration. For the first of the conclusions become immediately manifest from the least, the most simple, most known, and as it were, common conceptions. But those which are next in order to these become apparent through a greater multitude of conceptions and such as are more various. And the last conclusions are entirely the most composite, for he always uses the first conclusions as, as subservient to the demonstration of those that follow, <coughs> and presents us with an intellectual paradigm of the order observed in geometry or other disciplines and the connection of these conclusions with each other. So he's explaining how the how uh, Plato is presenting the Padiva. The uh, second hypothesis. Conclusions of the second hypothesis. Right, and so that the that the third is the most composite of the most multitudinous. Right the lowest level of the... The last level of, of conclusions, yeah. 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 But therefore, discourses bring with them an image of the <coughs> things of which they are interpreters. And if, as are the evolutions from demonstrations, such must be the order necessarily be of the things exhibited. It appears to me to be necessary that such things as derive their beginning from the most simple principles must be in every respect of a more primary nature and must be arranged as conjoined with the one. But that such as are always multiplied and suspended from various demonstrations must have proceeded farther from the subsistence of the one. So he's making a case there for unity goodness again, isn't he? <coughs> and 
For the demonstrations which have two conclusions must necessarily contain the conclusions prior to themselves. So it's back to that idea of archetype and, and members of the class. Mm -hmm. But those which contain primarily spontaneous and simple conceptions, primary. primary, spontaneous and simple conceptions, are not necessarily united with such as are more composite, which are exhibited through more abundant media, abundant media, and which are farther distant from the principle of being. This appears, therefore, that some of the conclusions are indicated of more divine orders, but, the, but others of such as are more subordinate. Some are more united, and others of more multiplied orders. And again, some are more uniform, and others of more multiform progression. For demonstrations are universally from causes and things first. If therefore first are the causes of second conclusion, there is an order of causes and things caused in the multitude of the conclusion. For indeed to confound all things and speculate them indefinitely in one, neither accords with the nature of things, nor the science of Plato. Uh -huh. So he's given the, his rationale as to how he places things in orders. So there's no use to find them all together and call them intelligence things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Demonstration. He's really using that in a different way. Than that. of all the con uh, 14 conclusions in the uh, second hypothesis there's some arguments or demonstrations that have two conclusions and those would be connected with a more mul multi-form and be yeah. subordinate to those that have a single conclusion uh -huh. so we should be able to put them in categories and see mm -hmm. some work to do yeah we should be able to line them up <coughs> well that's certainly a different way of looking at the second hypothesis <laughs> Some will even have four people. What are we going to put up? That's the question. 
four or five. Yeah, but it's in itself. It's in another instrument in itself. Not in another. And it's also just me that that's one much. Yeah. So it could be in that one mode. So it could be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think we'll be going back for the third time, Paul. Mm -hmm. <laughs> characterized by the one. Then he goes in and says, should neither speculate multitude about the one, nor remain in the one monad of being, nor in short introduce to the one which is above all being, the whole multitude of first beings immediately. And there's about four distinctions in there. And I, I, I was trying to figure out what what each one related to, like, is it the, the one, the pure one? And then what is the one monad of being? And what is that which is above, the one above all being? And then the one that is, and then the being that is characterized by the one. I take it the more in short introduced to the one which is above all beings, the whole multitude of first beings immediately go together, but I'm not sure. And I was trying to work that out and, and it looked like he had four levels to it. Or going down and coming up. Yeah. Oh what? Oh what? I don't know. I, I, I'm trying to find a place. I know the section you're talking about. I had to puzzle with it myself, Gene. I haven't figured out the best thing I could come up with at this point was that he's, I call this guy the yo-yo man. Mm -hmm. you know, he, can take, he can take an unfold from the one all the way down to matter mm -hmm. in a phrase to qualify something and then bring it right back up when he goes to make the point. <laughs> and he'll do that in two sentences, you know. And well, Plotinus did that for some reason. But not, well, this thing. Yeah. So right, that, that may is, be yeah. what he's doing, but... Well, that's I'm the closest sure. candidate I came up with on that, and I haven't resolved it. Well, because it's... Well, it's, it's, it's that is my ignorance. Well... About being which is characterized by the one. I think we talked about that as that idea of the good or the... The three triangles, right? What? Page 30? Page 30. Uh -huh. And to say, should neither speculate multitude about the one, that would be the first level. That's right. You're so not going to do that. <coughs> Handle the first part, which is the characterized by the one we've said is the idea of the good or the, the three, three triangles on the board in that model. So then we said, should neither speculate about the one that takes care of that, nor remain in the one monad of being, 
That would look like that middle unity goodness. Nor in short introduced to the one which is above all being, the whole multitude of first being immediately. But the first special. being the utmost or the lowest? No, first being is uh, <coughs> first, first being beings. Immediately, that would be mm -hmm. the idea of the, or the characterized by the one, wasn't it? I think so. Because we would want to introduce, we would want to introduce to the one, the unity goodness, not present it with the whole multitude of first beings. Mm -hmm. But should unfold as in the first order such beings as have an occult subsistence, which we're saying would be provenance, right, Pierre. I, I really don't know about that. I would say I would uh, to where you cut the sentence. And, uh, and he's saying what's going on, and he's telling you what should unfold. So those are two divisions. So you think what? shouldn't happen and what should happen. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. but so what I'm saying is down here, but should unfold as in the first order, such beings as having a cult subsistence yeah. and are yeah. allied to the one. That, should be, to the one. Yeah, that one. should be presented to the one. Then the second or the middle. And the middle one. And last. So you have three divisions here. <coughs> now, how do you cut it above it? And the key's going to be in short. <coughs> it's it's uh, the, the two ideas there are uniformity and unitedness. Unitedness and uniformity. Mm -hmm. well, I, I, I skipped to the end uh, about divine orders which are subordinate to the others. Didn't we say that the uh, one which is above all beings is that unity goodness? Mm -hmm. So he's saying that we shouldn't that should be presented introduce we shouldn't introduce to that the multitude of first beings immediately. Or does that just immediately just go the last of us? Yeah, that's what I think. Because go to the next, go to where it says, but should. Because you don't want to speculate multiplicity about the one. You know, that's right. Yeah. So what you have to, if you take on the should there, but should unfold as in the first order, such beings as having a cult subsistence. Yeah, but they're, they're, okay, you're going to finish. Rod's point is one. Right. Nor remain in the one two. more man of being if he's unfolding right. dialectical methods. Right. That's two, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then he's summarizing, or in short. Yeah. Right, he's summarizing. Or in short, introduce the one. Immediate. Yeah, you don't want to introduce multitude to the one immediately. No. Right. Hey, no. You've got to have too much of a shock. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Exactly what he said, shattered. That's right. <laughs> you would want to at least introduce some unity. But there's three there, then. Well, I don't know if you're supposed to be close to something. Oh, yeah. Down. That's what it would say. Um, 
Isn't he just recapitulating when he says Norin Short? No. Well, it looks like that. It looks like that. But uh, it also could be in. restricting my words about the next point. Mm -hmm. See, so, because take the content, you introduce to the one which is above all beings, introduce to the one which is above all beings, the whole multitude of first beings immediately. That's describing what he had just introduced, isn't it? I guess that in short is different. Isn't it? Well, see, it's, it's uh, Rod has spent a certain more time on this than I have, but uh, see, it's a like question of whether you want to say what he re Rod, Rod, what he refers to here is the one monad of being whether he's going to refer to that as which is above all beings. Mm -hmm. Explaining that with the phrase the whole multitude of first beings. Mm -hmm. And uh, see, so this is uh, this is vertical and that's horizontal. Yeah. In either case, you're dealing with a multitude. You're saying, hey, before you do that, you're still involved in a multiplicity. Hold on, we're going to have a method. Let's not shock the one. Yeah, let's not shock the one to multi <laughs> multitudes by either going through this monad or the plurality right. of right. beings. Ah, how about this idea? This unity idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, I take that to mean, but should unfold as in the first order, such beings as have an occult subsistence and are allied to the one. That's good. Mm -hmm. But he didn't say it. No, I'm saying. And then we say that's where that uh, uh, providence was located. Yeah, that's what this allows him to do is now do this. The whole thing is an order of being. Mm -hmm. Right. Takes intelligence being and divides it. Right. right. Mm -hmm. Horizontally and vertically. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So he's finding a hell of a lot of interest. Mm -hmm. What do you mean by a cult? <laughs> A cult is the word there, Carol. It also is translated hidden or secret is translated in something. Now, I have yet to look up in good English dictionary. I've kicked myself you know, for a month now for doing the English dictionary because I suspect that Taylor was drawing on that uh, meaning from the English word when you use the cult. Yeah. This is a bit yeah. I have with myself. Yeah, you see, in principle, it's a cult. That's hidden. Because if here is intelligence, this is above intelligence, and therefore it has to be above or beyond intelligence. And therefore hidden. Yet, yet it's the principle of intelligence, and therefore it is, in that sense, a cult or hidden. Or secret from the secondaries, as he talks about in the uh, element of theology. And he uses the word occult, that's in that sense. So I guess it would be, if you're looking at the things themselves, the archetype of those things would be hidden. You would have to yeah. gather that yeah. from looking and getting yeah. the comments okay. from yeah. among the yeah. things. Yeah. You'd have to actually pull yeah. out yeah. the yeah. archetype. And this mm -hmm. is even more thin. Yeah, and you got to really dig for that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. yeah. So that's secret and occult. Because it's above it. And therefore transcends it. 
where the, where the one itself is mm -hmm. certainly going to be more hidden than the unity itself. It's going no no, it's going to be hidden in the hidden. <laughs> hidden in the hidden. <laughs> Egyptian the darkness. mystery. How does the Tao the Darkness read it? The Tao? Yeah. Oh, an enigma is sealed in a right. mystery. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Wait a minute. Minutes off? Well, listen, we could probably push right at the end of the well, we finish the chapter. Yeah, we can finish yeah. the whole thing then. Yeah, we got ten minutes. We have to rest the book. That's curious. We don't have the sense of the exactly twelve o'clock. Oh, occult. Too quick to introduce the multitude of twelve. That whole thing in brackets then has to be under the second hypothesis. <laughs> the vertical so bracket. The last brackets. The last yeah. get from you. Oh, that's bracketing. Is that <laughs> Heidegger would be pleased. Those are called braces. Yeah. I think he needs that one. Okay, braces. <laughs> the brace. Your floating brace. <coughs> the unity goodness down to. The manifold deity. The being brace. Um, yeah. The horizontal being brace. Huh. Mm -hmm. I love it. True being has that expression that you sometimes see in the Republic of, of Ontos, in an Ontos way, in an Ontos, Ontos way. <laughs> Why is that funny, Barbara? Why is that funny? Funny? I'm glad you asked her. <laughs> really? <laughs> I can't keep laughing louder. Hi. Right. Yeah, it's funny. Yeah. 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 Next time, I'm not going to laugh loud. I know that. I doubt it. you got to explain anything you see that's humorous. All right. That's not a So what's on and on? On and on. On and on. Maybe well, I, I, I can tell you what I Barbara. find funny, but only if Barbara does hers. Mm -hmm. Well, if I find mine to be different, how about I do it? <laughs> 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 
Well, you could always say, oh, that's my idea, too. <laughs> that's, yeah, I could, yeah. Actually, I don't know exactly what. Like, I... Well, I have to do mine first. God. Mm. But isn't that kind of like the enigma in a mystery? Mm -hmm. Maybe if you repeat the, the point that you just made first. True being. The, the, the Greek is ontos in, in, in and ontos in fashion. It's an adverb. Is the good, goodly. <laughs> good, goody. <-ly. laughs> so I just think that's a real, actually kind of a beautiful way of uh, saying that. Uh, uh, most purely, and maybe doing what's most appropriate to for being. Uh, what, 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 what do you have reference to? Uh, is concept of God? Pardon? Do you have oh, reference to I his concept of God when you said that? Look, I was just look at that quarter, look at that. Mm -hmm. I was just wondering about the source you quoted to me very long ago. Yeah, oh, I was looking at the first lines we just read, yeah. the second hypothesis are about true being. Yeah. So I was looking in the Greek for true being. Oh, I thought you were in the Republic. No. Oh, and yeah, so I was like saying... God in reality. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, no. Oh, oh, what are they doing in the Republic? Right. Yeah, good in reality. They use the... That's the same. Yeah. The uh, same construction. Mm -hmm. And when they talk about true being, they use this expression similar in the Republic. In the Republic? I'll have to look. I thought so. Keep up. What's true thing is when <coughs> I, uh, remember when we did, I remember when we did uh, Crocolis. That stood, that stood us on our head. That's what this comes out. In the uh, um, elements of the Yeah. Mm. Yeah, because uh, <coughs> remember what uh, uh, just now that it's past twelve o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. Don't take it off too much. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. yeah. <laughs> Remember what we said about this before? Uh -huh. Right, because each of these can be regarded as members in a class. Uh -huh. <clears throat> now he has this now. Is is in principle intelligible. Not as, not as, uh, not in the way in which being is intelligible in respect to its manifold. He has that great line where he says, uh, but that, now this is a language for all of these classes. So you're just going to pick up this language and put it here, and look what happens. But whatever quality this has, it has to communicate that quality to each of the members, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Right? And it must then, it communicates to it as it were, uh, gives it its, its subsistence, doesn't it, as a man. So it gives it a gift of being and fills it with the uh, activity or the power to pull off this stunt. Right? That's your seat. That's what he defines as your seat. One of the ways he talks about his seat. Take that and put it right in here. You got the same thing. Therefore, the same language that he uses to talk about the class and the members in the class, he just picks up and moves 
Well, and you can do that. So yeah. I'm talking yeah. about the relationship. Yeah, that's right. right. That's the principle of the relationship. Yeah. Therefore, uh, th th therefore, it makes these kinds of sense. Period. Right. Just sure. right. take that logic and put it over here. Oh, true being. Oh, yeah. Well, therefore, it must be intelligible. Therefore, it must communicate to each of these. To get a subsistence or, or uh, being and fills it with a sea because it has the capacity of self reflection. And generating itself. growth and nurture. Pardon? Like it's generating growth and nurture. That's right. It's generating growth and nurture. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Yeah, it's right there. Yeah. And that's where he gets it from, the uh, end of Book 6 in the Republic. So it's, yeah, it's a. Uh, in the old days, though, everyone in, in, in Greece had a blackboard. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. was talking. Primary school. <coughs> it is overtime. Overtime.